I don't know if you've ever had an interview start like this, but I cried to you last night, Nipsey. You cried to me. <laughs> yeah. And I think also, I think people may want to dive into this stuff more, especially now if they're barely getting caught up on just your uh, your way of thinking. Uh -huh. When it's not music, it's an article. Right. It was when Complex had like your not a confrontation, but you guys spoke after they had already put you on this list that was like an underwhelming, underachievers type list. Right. But the reason I cry, not because you stood up to whoever the author was, but more so because of how affirmative you were. Right. Like there's this part in this interview where the guy's trying to explain why they put you on this list of like under whatever, underachieving people. Right. And then you were like, if I'm in the street, no one's gonna be like, Onip hasn't dropped. Right. He's not doing well. Right. They're gonna look at me and they're gonna say, keep going. Right. Because you're supposed to be dead. You're right. supposed to be doing jail time. All you're not time. supposed to be here. All time. And your following words were like, I am the law of attraction. Right. I'm doing God's work. Like all of that stuff. And I don't right. mean to cry. But seeing that happen in 2000, and this is like years ago, 2013, might as well have been another generation yeah. ago. When people weren't thinking this way, especially when it came to big uh, blog names and sites like Complex, right? right? We weren't expected to stand up to that type of uh, critique. Right. I think you mentioned it felt very like spectating on us. Right. Sarcastically. Yeah. Yeah. And then to like, like cynical. Yeah. And then to see it, to see now, it's almost like a redemptive quality that I feel like every fan of yours, every follower of yours feels today. Because this is not something that you just jumped on. Right. This is not something that like is a trend or, or you saw someone else do. Like you have been speaking it since you started. Right. That's I don't right. know why I cried. I was like in bed, like my baby's right next to me. Like you're so whack. <laughs> nah. But it made me cry. Nah, I, that's love. Thank you, sis. I appreciate that. I think there's this there's this uh, culture too that since that was in 2013, and now I'm seeing it as well like a cynical take or like a sarcastic take is almost the go-to now. And that legitimizes you. Like, how can you clown this artist or how right, can you clown right. like this moment in media? But this is real life stuff. You gotta do anything you do with love or you mm -hmm. shouldn't do it. Or it's gonna come across like it ain't, no, if you cook some food and it ain't no love in it, it's not gonna taste the same. Mm -hmm. If you covering a, a, sh a, a culture and you don't got love for that culture, you don't, you know, you're not, native to that culture and you don't have the understanding of what mm -hmm. you know the, the 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 qualities and the values of that culture is you don't got no right having an opinion about it I agree. and that's what the complex back and forth was it's like you know what i'm saying y'all got your whole metrics wrong you mm -hmm. know what i mean like you know where i come from like you said you know i ain't on drugs i ain't dead i ain't you know what i mean doing a hundred years i'm overachiever Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah. Don't get it. Don't get it confused. Don't judge me on rap standards. Don't don't put me on rapper uh time because you know, my life ain't just a rapper life and my history and my background ain't a rapper background. Mm -hmm. So you gotta you gotta judge me on, as a man and the ground I cover. And if that's the case, you know, triple your whole staff your whole staff up yeah. and you're gonna have my my path and my journey. To see that uh not just be said. Cause at the same time, at that time, they still the the conversation still felt like the tone like, well, you do seem like you're taking a personal Nipsey, right? Well, you do seem this way, Nipsey. Right. But I think the turnaround moment, the today, the now, right? To see you still be on your tip, and cause it's like sometimes it's like the realest people don't go far, right? But it's like no, I told you that, and then now I'm here. This was what I knew even back then. We was having that argument like all right bro what it been five years six years mm -hmm. track your progress from then to now mm -hmm. track mine let alone the 10 years before that yeah like you know we got writers that's writers we got great writers we got Ernest Hemingway we got real legend mm. you're not one of them writers bro mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so for you to have this opinion on who to like what's what like you know you got to validate yourself before yeah. you know because if I put the microscope on what you're doing not even just in music or writing, just in life. It ain't going to stack up. But, you know, everybody's a, a, entitled to their opinions. That's why I fired back and gave them my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I just made points. I just gave facts in that, in that article. And I read it back afterwards, too, 
And I'm like, yeah, let me be critical of myself and see if I was just like being over aggressive with this dude. I ain't, everything I said was a fact. Yeah. Go through there and break down everything that was spoken on. Everything was a fact and a point. And even now, further on down the line, I, it still stand up. I ain't, I ain't tell no lies. Mm -mm. You feel me? So I think that's what the, what the beautiful part about it is now and that it resonated because it's been so many years and I don't mean to go to the past about it, but it's, a, again, like I said, it's redemptive in the fact that they might have had whatever standpoint that they had, like, well, he, it's true, he hadn't dropped or the Crenshaw thing, wh like, what after type stuff. Right, right. But it's like, no, now you can't. That was before I put out Crenshaw, too. That was like three weeks before I put out Crenshaw. Mm. And... The reason we had that interview is because when I put out Crenshaw, they asked me for an interview. And I told them, man, suck my dick. It's 10,000 mm -hmm. 10, for an interview. Mm -hmm. I was frustrated. I sent that back in the email. And <clears throat> because of that, I ended up having a meeting with Mark Echo, who owned Complex at that time. Mark Echo won us. You know what yeah. I mean? He's from this. And so we ended up talking and became friends. And he like, bro, you know, the magazine got their own individual opinion. I let mm -hmm. them do what they do. But let's have another convo. Get on the phone after the fact and talk to him. Tell him everything you told me. Right. Because when I went up there and had a convo with Mark Echo, I told him, you got to vet your, your, your writers mm -hmm. and, and before they speak on behalf of your, your brand. And I said that in the article. You say anything bad about Nip in a certain part of L.A., a nigga will slap you. Mm -hmm. Not me. Somebody will slap you for that. Mm -hmm. So just watch, pick your words wisely and be respectful about something that you are not native to. Yeah. And I ain't got nothing to do with race because I don't know what race do what. I can yeah. tell his point of view. And then I even said complex as a whole. Y'all opinion be funny style sometimes. Y'all be trying to poke fun at yeah. like this our life. We ain't monkeys dancing mm -hmm. for y'all entertainment. You feel me? So be careful when you talking about this shit. Niggas will take offense to that. I think even when you said like, even if you don't like it, don't say anything. Cause understand there's still that that person's still going through it. And guess what? If you don't like it, cool, I get it. But at the end of the day, yo, you saying something bad about it might impact the business mm -hmm. of it. So then now what if I trip on you? Yeah. What if I feel like you fucking my money up and we, we, you got your platform and your power. What if I direct my power toward tripping mm -hmm. on you now? Cause I feel like you fucking up my dough. Yeah. I'm gonna be wrong. So keep shit on the surface. Don't, don't, you feel me? Cause mm -hmm. you got a platform, you got some strength. It, the type people and the people you spitting on their name, they got platforms and strength also. Yeah. And we all gonna meet in the middle. You know what I mean? It ain't to be threatening or none of that. It's just like keep shit keep shit like in reality. If you wouldn't say that to me in my face, don't say that shit at from all. The, from the safety of your thirty mm -hmm. second floor office. And a, a brand, because it's not the person. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why I said you throwing rocks hiding your hand, but it's all love. I never responded to y'all asked for an interview. Mm -hmm. And that's another spit in my face. Like, stop with this fake shit. Yeah. But you know, I I, I overstand everything. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's that's just the nature of that shit. But certain times it'll irk you to the point you'll just say something. Yeah. And it's like, man, I could really just hit you with all facts. You feel me? And I could get mad at you and flex on you. But I do a little of both, so you don't think I'm just mm -hmm. either one because I could just quietly tell you fact for fact how you got. Your whole story wrong yeah or i could just tell you a bitch ass nigga and slap you yeah but let's find a middle ground you feel me you did both eloquently i, I, I read it back <laughs> like two years Very later articulate. i'm like damn that's that's a cold it's Hell just, yeah it's a cold conversation we had yeah. yeah that that's what i'm saying like it stands the test of time and it's stuff that other people can go back to we go back to a lot of our great interviews and unfortunately that was that was on well it's still articles are great but to, for people to be able to go back to that stuff, something like that, it can impact you in whatever stage you're in right now. Straight up. Even back then, you seeing a uh, label. I, I think more so nowadays, we're watching young people get into label deals. And, and it's something you mentioned early. And what gets a lot of people that are young very uh, quickly is like, we're going to give you a bunch of money up front. And you see the money, but you don't know that it's a loan. Right. And then on some intellectual property stuff and, and you were like, give me an asset. Right. It's like, no. And it's like, why would I not have an asset that I've made? Like, why is it not mine? And so again, to see you still stand up for something way back when, when I don't feel people were standing up like that, now it's becoming more of a trend. Now it's where people are younger and like getting these these conversations and not being swayed so much by like the money aspect of it. I saw that with you prior. And right. I think we've all kind of seen that, uh, influence that you've had even if it's not musically even if it's not how someone sounds it's how someone moves behind the scenes which is more important right that's that's how if you look at what made people start wearing clothes that fit when everything was baggy 
what made people fashion change, what made people feel comfortable doing a lot of things I was like, wasn't like culturally correct. Mm -hmm. The music changed. So you want people to think ownership, the music changed, the the, the trend changed, and you, mm -hmm. and you start talking about it. People got in their interviews and start making it a, a badge of honor to be independent and to own your, own your things. And now you got young people coming into the game turning down big deals, yeah. you know, going indie so they can own their thing. They might not even understand what that means in the long run. They just know that that's, the, that's in style is to be an owner. Mm -hmm. And so if I play the role in that, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, if we're going to follow trends, might as well be that one. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> On the Forbes article that they released about you, you mentioned a book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. I read that book and it fucked me up because the first chapter was like, don't expand your brand too much because it can like a certain car brand, right? Try to make so many different uh, models. And in that they lose their focal point. Mm -hmm. and, I f and then I'm like, damn, that ties into Nipsey because I just see Marathon Clothing, Marathon Agency, Marathon Water, yeah. like everything yeah. is Marathon yeah. and it's tied in. Yeah, I think even, even outside of like business and branding, even in music, when you get an album that's all over the place, you'd be like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But then you get them albums that's really focused and that's really, you know, a place, it's a world or just really an idea that they really zoomed all the way in on. Mm -hmm. So I think um, brands also get more powerful the more focused they are. It's like yeah. in and out in and out sell hamburgers. You know what I mean? They got a line around the corner. Yeah. Every, every day they don't got no salads on the menu. They don't got too they sell hamburgers, fries and shakes. But they just they known for that. They keep that at a high level. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, you got powerful brands that's really focused on just doing specific things better than everybody else. Yeah. You know. How do you do that and then still build? Cuz that was like my question after reading that like shoot but you want to do other things, but you're trying to stay focused too. I mean, you get you get clientele more than transactions. Mm. You build clientele, and that's a lifetime. If you if you live by what your values are, your brand values, mm -hmm. you get a client that, over the course of your whole spending career, mm -hmm. they didn't spend with you and supported you, and they end up being worth more than a thousand one-time customers. You have fads, you have moments that really hit big, yeah. and they they got one-time customers. They didn't. They can't repeat that over and over and over. They got a moment where they they did it right, but then if that's the case, they'll do them numbers every time they drop. Yeah. But, you know, other 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 brands, not even artists, other brands. You know, just being consistent with with what they what they build because they super serve who who follow them and they mm -hmm. and they and they over deliver to the ones that's with them, and so that's it's a consistent clientele they build. You yeah. know what I mean? So. I just think, you know what I mean? It's different strokes for different folks, though. And everybody approach is going to be different. But that book got a lot of game in it just I about agree. what makes a brand powerful. This was, this is, I want to ask you your, so you could think about it while I explain this. You have great business deals and a lot of success in business. I want you to think of maybe a learning lesson business move that you may have had or something that you're like, damn, that didn't go so well. Mm -hmm. But I remember in Victory Lab where you talk about how your brother put the safe in the backyard. Yeah. And then when you guys went to go dig it up, it was like mold all over it. So it's like the money lost there. You're saving, but at the same time, like you couldn't rescue it all. Right. And those learning moments, like, oh, okay, maybe let's not put safes in backyards. <laughs> but Definitely don't. don't bury no money. What's a business move that you've had that you're like, ah, maybe I shouldn't have either jumped too too soon or too late on it? You've been blessed, honestly. You've been doing all right, man. Knock on wood. Yeah. I hope, you know, well, because really I know Jordan, I think it's a Jordan quote. And I'm a Kobe fan, but still, it's a Jordan quote. Like, it's I'm the best because I've lost so much. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, you know, I fucked up my sacks early when I was a you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm, I learned how to how to bring it all back when I was a little younger. Mm -hmm. So I think that if I don't live by my rules, I know why I, I, I failed or why mm -hmm. it didn't work. If I live by the rules, though, that I learned in, in the game that I got, mm -hmm. that shit works. It's consistent. Yeah, it, It's just about being disciplined and sticking to the script throughout the whole time. If the rules work, you know, we used to, you apply the rules, that shit work. Yeah. yeah. It's a formula. For sure. Uh, racks in the middle. I didn't know what that meant. When, when you when you first heard the title, you yeah, didn't know what that I meant. I didn't know what that meant. Right. And then Jorge looked at me like, I've taught you better than this. Right, right. But 
Okay, Raxon Middle is like putting thousands of dollars in the middle. That's why I said I'm, I was riding around in the V12 yeah. with the Raxon. I don't even know what V12 is. I'm not like hip like it's that. A car. It's, <laughs> a car. it's a car. It's a 12 cylinder. <laughs> some, some expensive shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's expensive. That's what I know. Yeah. But the the racks go in the middle. That don't fit in your pocket. If you right. got some real bands, you mm-hmm. gotta put them in a bag or something, or you might just like sit it right here. See, and that's like I love your stunt because your stunt is not just like I got bands. Right. It's because right. it, it, then you even say like you got the blues in the. Oh, oh JP got you the full walk. <laughs> no, huh? I, oh, you got... I felt stupid once I asked him what's racks in the middle, and then I'm like, I'm not even gonna bring this up to you again. Right. But I got the blues on the dash. Yeah. Yeah. And that's. Hundreds. Yeah, hundreds. Blue faces. See. Yeah. Yeah. We're learning. There you go. <laughs> no, but one part of the song, and I think that it's very important because it goes back again, like full circle into your first year come up is the stuff about fats and the stuff about like you not not for nothing, but a lot of your success you attribute to the team around you. Yeah. And even in your success, you're thinking of the people that aren't there for you with you now. In particular, when it comes to the people that you're doing this for and the people that you're doing it as a representation of is that room's responsibility heavy it's it's heavy but it's felt you know i feel i feel that it's, it's people that depend on this thing to keep going to keep growing mm-hmm. you know but we built for it for the challenge you know we we aware of what it is i really be feeling like man we didn't we didn't got through some hard times you know we didn't we didn't been through uphill battles in this thing so mm-hmm. I'm 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 not naive enough to think we don't got other steep steep hills we got to go up and just challenging moments. But you know I got a cold history that I can reflect on. Yeah, just a moments that I felt questionable and just like I don't know if we can do it. Yeah, and we didn't got through all of them. So you know I think that's one of the benefits we got that we survived some 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 turbulence. You know we yeah. Been, it's like a sailor that been on the ocean through some bad storms. Mm-hmm. It might get rough, but you know, you seen some bad ones. So you yeah. you, you got some reference of it coming back down and getting cool, you know? Really, Nip? There's nobody like you. And I don't say that to like kiss your butt, but there's people that are categorized as street rappers. There's people that are categorized as conscious, storytellers, lyrical. I feel like you encompass, like if you, if we had like categories, you check every box. Right, right. Do you know that you're different? Like, you know that it's not the same as everyone else. I mean, that's the goal. You know, it's like a, if an athlete is like a scoring champ, mm-hmm. the game bigger than just scoring. It, yeah. got, it, it got more tied, it got dimensions yeah, to yeah. it. So you might have to work on your defense and get your defense up. And the goal is to be an overall player though. Yeah. Same with, with music, with hip hop. We want to be hit makers. We want to be album makers. We want to be um, global brands. We want to be touring artists. We, but you can't do everything at once. It's something you build, and eventually you start seeing some form. Yeah. And it's like, man, I look like something over there. So it's it's literally like speaking different languages. You're like quadlingual. You can speak to every fan, every right. type of fan. Right, right. I don't see it in other. Well, and I feel stupid because people would be like, so and so's like this, and so and so's like this. Like, right. I, I hear Hove, I hear Ross in my head already when I think that. It's just different with you. That's love. And Thank I you. think beyond, and if people just, see, I think the biggest attraction to Nip already is uh, your business moves, and people know, like, platform for that. Right. It's like, no, I'll listen to him too. Though. Right, right. Like, pay attention to because it's more than that. Right, right. And you know, um, this is my first album. You know, to, to be a fan from the mixtapes, it means you've been really tuned in. But mm-hmm. it's a lot of people that just check what's on the front page of their Spotify or check what's on the yeah. front page of their Apple. So by us being in album mode now, it's like, you know, I'm sure that the story will be um, more music-based. You yeah. know what I mean? That's the goal. That's something I'm challenged by. Yeah. I want I want, I want, want the music to have center stage at some point. And I said this earlier, like, I never wanted to be no starving artist. I never mm-hmm. wanted to be somebody like desperate, you know, because they make music all day. So I, I focused on business as I went, even before having businesses, I was a hustler. Mm-hmm. That's why I didn't rap, because I, I was a hustler and I was trying to get dough. Yeah. And so, you know, I've kept that mentality, but as these businesses grow, as, you know, the foundation we standing on become more solid, it's like I'm, I'm liberated to just be an artist yeah. and just focus on making music, you know what I mean? I have one more thing before I let you go, because yeah. I talk a lot. It's all good. You got the you got the right job for that. <laughs> the Dr. Sevi Doc. 
Yeah. I keep hearing people like so afraid for you, and it makes protect, me protect, afraid. Protect, yeah. Protect, no. Yeah, it makes That's me crazy. afraid, and it, it's almost become like a funny like meme type thing to say. But diving into it, I got diagnosed with something called Hashimoto's disease. It's an autoimmune disease, mm. and Jorge was like. Okay, Dr. Sebi, we need to go. And he's not alive anymore. He passed right, away. Right. Uh, but he has like a store out here. Yeah. And the stuff that, they, that they've that provided has helped a lot. Right. Uh, what got you interested in Dr. Sebi? Well, my girl put me on Sebi. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me, I'm like, all right, let me see what it's about. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't eager to believe it, you know. I just started listening to him talk. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I'm a wired person. You know what I mean? I'm a... I'm a I write, I'm a, I'm a performer, I'm a talker. So I just, I felt a certain frequency from what he was saying yeah. and it was making too much sense. And then I tried it and I felt, I felt the impact. I didn't have no disease I was trying to get rid of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just was tired from touring and from being on the road all the time and smoking weed and not eating right. And I'm like, I need to, ba- I need to figure out a way to keep my energy balanced. And uh, it worked, you know what I'm saying? And so I start really reading up on dude, watching his interviews and everything. And, I just found myself telling people about it. I mm-hmm. ain't even wanted to be no, like, spread the word, yeah, yeah, yeah. campaign, be an evangelist. I just started talking to people about it. Anybody that say something, oh, you should try this, bro. Or, you know, yeah. says you should try this. And I found out about that trial. And I'm like, damn, that story. Forget about the health benefits of it and all right. that. Just from a story point of view, somebody went to trial and proved in court that they cured HIV. That's a great story. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? From that point of view, that story should be told, you know? And so that's why I've been trying to collect info and put together the documentary about it. Not on some like convert the world to take Sevies. Mm-hmm. Nah, yeah. just I think that story is interesting. It should be told. Yeah. Uh Lauren, when you guys first got together, gave you a book, right? Uh-huh. And it yeah, was She gave like, me a lot of books. Yeah, that's so cute. Uh, but one of them was it. It was the one about how to be with a partner, right? That's like a you talking about the, the way of the superior man, yeah. Book? Yeah, and it kind of helps women with men that are more powerful, kind of like being around them or being in relationships with them. Correct? Mm-hmm. Do you have tips for guys that are with women that are also in that type of a a, a superior woman and a superior position? Because I feel like it's both of you guys giving that off right i just feel like whether any whoever you surround yourself with you around 10 broke niggas you're gonna be the 11th one Mm -hmm. you around people that have high standards for themselves or high integrity got Mm -hmm. high standards for their friends for their people you know that's gonna rub off and you're gonna have that type of energy around you so if you with somebody and they they somebody that's high energy or a powerful person you know, that's motivation for you to stay on top of your game. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, somebody probably going to call you out or it's going to be lopsided. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I know my girl work. My girl will bring home a check. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like what I look like falling off. You know what I mean? Not that I would feel like right. it's cool to fall off if I didn't, but it's just like you got a little bit more of a daily yeah. reminder. You it's know like what I mean? like steel sharpens steel. 100%. That's the, that's the simple way to say it. Yeah. yeah period. Thank you, Nip. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you. You already know. I'm glad I didn't cry too much. You did good. Don't trip. You did great.